let's make a rope bowl. Here I have some inexpensive clothesline. This particular package came from Walmart. I really like the kind that is synthetic cotton and polypropylene just because it's easy to sew through and it makes a beautiful bowl. It, we don't have to use pure cotton here. So just go ahead and start with the end. Now you see here, I have a pile of scraps. These are like green and turquoise scraps, which I think will make a beautiful bowl. So I have some shorter ones and I also have some longer ones. So let's start with one that's a little bit longer just to make it an easy start. Now I have a cheap glue stick. You can use any kind of a glue stick and I'm going to liberally put some glue on the end, lots of glue. And then I will place the end of my clothesline here and just kind of wrap the end so that it is completely covered. And then I'm just going to keep wrapping. As you do this, you have the choice of, you can wrap the whole clothesline, wrap a whole lot before you come to your sewing machine or you can wrap as you go. When I'm doing this with scraps, a lot of times I'll wrap as I go because then I don't have to use as much glue. I always glue at the end for an easy start. And if you are not sitting at your sewing machine so you're immediately going to sew, then you'll want to glue the end of each piece to the rope and glue the next starting piece on, which I'll show you that but since I am sitting right here, I am not going to have to glue each end and each beginning piece. I'll just use a little clip to hold it until I sew, but I'll show you how to do that. So say you're sitting and watching TV with your family and preparing some rope to make rope holes. You will want to, again, use plenty of glue and I'll glue this end piece on so that it's secure and then I'll pick out my next piece so say I'm going to use this one well I want a dark one I'm going to use this one so for my next piece I will prepare it the same way and I'll go ahead and use plenty of glue and then I will place it on wrap it around and then just start wrapping in the same way now if you are doing this with scraps so you'll be using lots of different pieces to me it's easiest just to do it at your sewing machine and then instead of gluing each end and then each starting a new strip i would just use a little clip so i'll just go ahead and clip this right now so that will stay in place and I have a nice long piece. So to get started, I am just going to make a little coil and I want it to start off as tight as I can. I mean, not too tight. You don't want to stretch the fabric, just, just enough so that there's not going to be any gaps. Okay. And I pinned that coil. So, in order to keep this coil for me to get started, I'm just gonna sew a little X in the coil. And it will just, this is an optional part, but it's going to help the coil stick together while I begin zigzag stitching the coil. So I'll go ahead and just finish this little X here. Okay. Now, the next step is to set your sewing machine to a zigzag stitch. It needs to be about a quarter inch wide, which is gonna be for me about 6.2. And the length of your stitch here is going to determine how much thread is in your project. This is a good, 1.5 is really good if you want lots of thread. Uh, you really want your thread to show. But in this case, I'm gonna move it up to two 
Uh, I don't really care if my thread shows. I'm using a green variegated thread so it matches my project. The thread's not going to be the star of the show. The fabric is. And this green variegated thread is going to match. So I can see about right here is the center of my piece and that's where I'm going to start sewing. So you begin just zigzagging over the center and then you just start zigzagging the coil together. Now it's very important that as you begin, your extras, your strand of rope here is on the right side and that will allow us to build the bowl out here on the left side. If you start like this, then you'll be building your bowl on the inside and you don't have a lot of room. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So I've got my zigzag stitch ready and the beginning is always a little bit ambiguous where to start but it really doesn't matter so I'm going to start about right here and as you turn it's really a lot easier to use the sewing stiletto this is a sewing stiletto from by Annie I really love it and I'm just using it to help me turn around And you can see here, I'm starting to build a coil right here, which that's okay. I'll show you in a minute how to fix that. But I'm just zigzagging around until I finish the part where I had sewn the X. So I'm about to come to that part. Let me do a little bit more. Now I've got this big coil here um, going around my needle. I could pick up all my rope and carry it through and, and uncoil it, or I could just cut thread and take it out. This is the bottom of your bowl. It's not gonna show really. And then I'm gonna start over. So the place where I need to start, I can tell is right here where I stopped. And I'm also keeping in mind that this is again gonna come off on the right side but I want to start right here where I ended. I'll back up about a half an inch. And it's hard to tell right here, especially because the fabric is all the same color, but I'm trying to keep this line right here that shows the center of the stitch. I'm trying to keep this line right in the little valley between the two pieces of rope coil. So let's get around and then you'll see better what that looks like. So here we're starting to really make new coil. Now I can use my stiletto to help me, but I want to make sure I keep it behind the needle. If I poke the stiletto in right here, I risk having it hit the needle and that would break the needle. So at the beginning, we just go slower because there's a lot more turning at the beginning. And you see here I'm letting this little red line here be right in between the new rope and what I've already sewn. So now that I'm getting a little bit more, I don't need the stiletto. My sewing machine's feed dogs are really grabbing it. So I need to wrap some more. I'll just wrap this and then we'll go ahead and sew a little bit more. So I, I'm not going to use glue because I'm just going to, I'm ready to sew this in just a few seconds. So here we go. Our coil is getting bigger, which will be the bottom of the bowl. Okay, so let's add another strip. Let's see here, here's a pretty green one. Now, when you are at the sewing machine, it's easiest to add your strips like this, just from the front. Wrap it around a little bit, and if you wrap the first one all the way around, it'll be nice and tight, and then you can start to angle downward. But you kinda want that first one to be nice and tight, because remember, I haven't used glue this time. But since I wrapped the first one all the way around nice and tight, 
Um, it's gonna hold it. There's a little lump there, but that's okay. These, the scrappy baskets turn out a little lumpier than if you just cut long strips, but it, it all goes away and it turns out beautiful. So I'm just going to let my sewing machines feed dogs, pull it through while I just turn it. I'm just turning it here. So let's pick a nice long one. Oh, this one's cute with little gnomes. Now here's a selvage. Using selvages is just fine. In fact, I'm going to, in a minute, I'll use a strip that is entirely selvage. And I'll show you there's two ways to do it. Um, there's one way to do it where you let the selvage show. And then you might have a little bit of fuzz sticking out if it's a fuzzy selvage or, um, or you might have it look a little bit stripey. I think selvages are really fun to work with and you probably have a whole lot of them. So it's a great fun way you can make a scrappy rope selvage pole. So you can make a bowl any size you want or a tray. You could just keep going round and round like this and make a flat uh, placemat or a table topper or plate type thing or a trivet by just going around and around and making a flat coil. But I'm going to start lifting this up with my finger so that it will start building up the side of the bowl. If I only lift it up a little bit, it will make a very gradually sloping bowl. And if I lift it up a lot like this, it'll make it'll make more of a vertical uh, side of the bowl. So I'm going to do it about halfway here. And I'm just going to keep going around just like I was, but this time holding the bottom of the bowl up like this. And after you go around one time, you will start to see the shape coming. So let's add another one. And this time, let's add a selvage so you can see that. So here's a selvage piece. Now, if I lay it like this, then the white is going to show the most. This part gets covered up a little bit, but this part shows the most. So I'm going to turn it over so that, and if you had a fuzzy selvage and you didn't want it to show, you could do it like this. So this part will be covered up just a little bit, but I think we will still get a striped effect. So I'll wrap it around once, and then I will start angling it down. And we might get a little bit of a stripe going on here. Or the selvage might be entirely covered. We'll see. We do have a little bit of a stripe. So I could always just clip this here so I don't have to hold on to it. Now, see we're coming around to the second row of this side of our bowl, so you can see a little lip here starting to form. And I'm just gonna keep going around and around until my bowl, the edges of my bowl are as tall as I want them to be. And as you can see here, um, after a while, when, it, when the bowl starts to get bigger, it kind of, just starts to turn itself and it's very easy to keep going. All right, so as you can see, this bowl is not very big yet. It's really small, kind of like a finger bowl. It would be good on your desk to hold a little bit of candy or your paper clips. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stop here to show you how to end. So I've got a few inches here of my scrappy fabric and I'm going to cut the rope a few inches before the end, and I'm going to cut the rope at an angle, and it's gonna fray a lot. 
we'll cut it at an angle and all of this polypropylene part frays. So I can just trim that away because it's not going to show. And then it will, then, oh, I cut my strip. That's okay. Um, then I can see the cotton rope underneath and I can really get in there to cut this at an angle. And then I'm going to continue wrapping it and I will continue wrapping this strip of fabric over on itself a little bit so that at the very tip here, this part right here is just fabric. So my rope gets smaller here and tapers off and then right here, this part here is just fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut away the extra that I don't need. And this part here is really just twisted fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna pinch that and I will finish sewing around. And as I get closer, I'm letting the zigzag stitch go all the way over on top where there's no rope, it's just fabric. So it tapers off and then the zigzag stitch completely just captures that little bit of fabric. And I back stitch. And then you see here the side of the bowl tapers off really nice down to nothing. And you can go ahead and trim all your extra threads. You'll probably have quite a few, especially if you need to change bobbin thread or stop and start. Now, here are some pro tips. There is this product called Terial Magic, and this is a liquid stabilizer. When I'm done with my bowls, I spray liberally with Terial Magic till they're pretty soaked. And then while they're wet, I can kind of form them a little bit how I want them to be while they're wet and then let it dry and it really gives a professional finish to your bowl. So I just wanted to show you some other ones. Here's a beautiful bowl that I made all with tulip pink scraps, lots of different colors. And then here's one that I made with an oval bottom. So instead of a coil, I just bent the rope over for about seven inches and then went around and around that and built it up to this nice oval bowl. So I hope you have lots of fun making rope bowls. Please visit my blog post at SoCanShe.com for more information. Thanks.